Welcome back, everyone. Today, I have just a short rant for you. Not a long rant like I did the other day <laughs> that some of you liked and some of you didn't like, but that's okay. We're going to do it again. I like to have fun, so we'll keep doing it. Uh, just take things lightly and don't take it too seriously, and you'll be fine. I've always been told in my life, uh, do you ever take anything serious? I'm like, it may seem like I don't, but if I'm photographing a wedding or something, yes, I'm taking it very seriously. But anyway, that's not the point. The point is, what I see on the computer me and the internet, I tell you, there's just some people out there that just blow my mind. Some websites like Canon websites, I know more about them because I don't usually get on Nikon websites because I've never used Nikon. But let's take the Canon websites and then there's just all around this picture websites where people are posting pictures. Well, one of the rules they like to say is post your EXIF data. We've got to see your EXIF data. And by, if you don't know what EXIF data is, it's how you took the picture. It'll show your shutter speed, your f-stop, and your ISO. Well, Hey guys, I just want to take this second of your time. If you guys would please hit like and subscribe, it would go a long ways toward helping our channel and help us keep making these videos. Thank you. What good does that do? Let's say I've taken a picture of a bird 50 yards away. It's bright, sunny day. It's high noon. I'm shooting with my Canon R6. I got a 400 millimeter lens on there. I take that picture and I say, I shot this at 400 millimeter. I shot it at one 500th of a second at F4, ISO 400. I've just made those numbers up. But if I put that on the picture, they will let the picture stay on the website. But if you don't put your exit data, they'll take the picture off the site. Now, for the love of God, please tell me why. Because if I give you those numbers and you go out there the very next day, very next day you're out there, you got your camera, you dial it to the same settings I had, guess what? It's not going to look the same. The odds of you using the same camera at the same time of day with the same color bird with the same exact lighting conditions is not overcast, it's not bright and sunny, it's not raining. There's a million things. There is a moment in time that you captured. I think I said one five hundredth of a second for that picture I shot of the bird. Well, that is a one five hundredth of a second of a moment in time that can probably never be repeated again. So I can sit here and tell you all day long, well, I shot this picture at a wedding with, shot at 160 of a second, F2.8 at ISO 800. And you can go, go to the same building the next day or three hours later, it's going to be completely different. It's never going to be the same. You're never going to be in the exact same situation that you were before. Now, you know, I understand if, if there's race cars and they got a picture of a race car and the car's in focus and everything is blurred around them, that's called a pan. That's when you move with the car to keep the car in focus and blurs the background. But again, if I tell you I put that at one second, if you go out there and it's sunny while I did it and it's overcast when you did it, you're going to have to have different settings. Those settings are for a moment in time that can only be captured the second that you caught them or the one five hundredth of a second that you call them. You can't just take somebody else's numbers and get the same result. I mean, the odds of having the same camera and the same lens are pretty low, much less everything else being the same. So there's a reason they call it a moment in time. It's not repeatable. Every situation is different. Every setting is different and everybody shoots different. You just can't go to the same spot with the exact settings I used and get the exact shot. It's going to be different. Even I, if I went back the next day to try to do the same shot, I'm going to have different settings. So I do not understand why these websites take down your pictures if you don't put your exit data. It doesn't help anybody. That's just my short rant. I've put pictures on these websites and I always get notes that get taken down. Hey, you can't do this unless you post your exit data. So finally, I wrote one out this morning and I said, hey, why in the world do you want exit data? Because it's not going to matter. You're not going to be able to go get the same shot. I know I keep repeating myself. It just drives me nuts. I know I like to rant about things. It's just my style. I just don't understand. I, I'm not joining any more of these sites where they, you know, when you click join and they give you the list of rules you have to agree to. If there's anything on there by exit data, I'm just going to skip it because that's just silly. There's just no reason to have that. It's not going to help anybody. It's not going to do anything for your photography other than let you know how I shot for that one moment in time that you never get again. But anyway, I'm going to shut up about ranting. Exit data is good for some things. Like if you're looking at your exit data and you messed up and you got something a little blurry, you look, saw oh, my shutter speed was too low and you turn that up. Okay. Well, again, if I go back to that same spot, if it was overcast and I shot the first time and sunny this next time, it'll change again, but it'll give you, give you enough information to know I need to raise my shutter speed. So that's how I look at exit data. But as far as getting the same exact shot, it's not going to happen. I'm going to shut up right now. <laughs> you guys have a great day. And if we're helping you out, please hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you.